Pay close attention. What you're about to see is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Welcome to another edition of YPN News, bringing you news as it relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Israel Hawkins. Uh, Jeff, today we have interesting articles with the turn of events that are taking place in the Middle East. And uh, first we're going to start off with democracy overseas isn't the only place experiencing turmoil. Uh, right here, stateside, at least one politician is being urged to resign and another former congressman is being pressured to withdraw his candidacy. Now, YPN's Larry McGee has our story. Larry? Now, one of the biggest issues seems to be the resistance that the politicians are displaying uh, to the idea that they should leave or not seek office. Now, have those facts changed at all, or are they pretty much the same? No change in that respect, Katan. As the democratically elected mayor of San Diego, Bob Filner, has not succumbed to the calls for his resignation. Filner has been accused of sexual harassment by seven women and has been mayor of San Diego for less than a year after a 20-year career in Congress. In a press conference held recently, Mayor Filner took responsibility for his actions, admitting that the behavior that he has engaged in over the years has been wrong, and his failure, he said, to respect women is inexcusable. The 70-year-old mayor announced that, in an effort to address the issue, on August 5th, he is voluntarily entering a behavioral clinic to receive intensive counseling for his behavior. In the meantime, the attorney for the city, Jan Goldsmith, says that per an agreement with the mayor's lawyer, Mayor Fielner will no longer be permitted to meet with women alone in city facilities. All of the attention has apparently affected the mayor's popularity as well. The Democratic office holder has lost the support of his party. Local, national, and state Democratic leaders are all calling for the mayor's resignation. And posters say 70% of San Diegans would like to see the senior politician make an exit. Also, under fire this week for behavior which is socially accepted but politically a no-no, New York candidate Anthony Weiner acknowledged at a press conference that he continued to text sexually explicit photos of himself even after he resigned from Congress two years ago. At a campaign appearance recently, the former congressman said the voters will ultimately decide if he should run the city. Offering a few words of commentary on both issues, CBS News Chief and Washington correspondent Bob Schieffer says that the system is so broken now that these are the only sorts of people who are running for office a lot of the time. Serious people don't want to fool with it. In the end, he says, he has great confidence in the people. The people will decide the outcome of these two politicians because in the end, people get the representation they deserve. That, for a great share, is fair enough, for despite the propaganda for most, two politicians who are willing to stop, reconsider their actions and change, are better than a world full of politicians who continue to neigh without a notion or thought of repentance. For YPN News, I'm Larry McGee. Katan, Jeff, back to you. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. Well, thanks to the tireless efforts of U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, the long-stalled Middle East peace negotiations may once again restart. John Kerry said in a recent statement, when this process started several months ago, there were very wide gaps, very significant gaps between the two sides. We have been able to narrow those gaps very significantly. The process continues to be a slow one, but the two sides have agreed to meet and talk about talks to discuss reviving the peace negotiations. 
Now, hopes are to send top envoys to Washington as early as next week. Secretary Kerry has been working through many critical issues that have stalled these peace, peace talks in the past, including the 67 borders, the ongoing Israeli settlement building on the West Bank, and Palestinian prisoners. Larger issues still need to be addressed, like the status of Jerusalem and the fate of Palestinian refugees around the world. Israeli's neat lead negotiator, Justice Minister Zippy Livni, talked with CNN about the recent revival of the Middle East peace talks. She is hopeful that within the next few days to be one of the negotiators in Washington meeting with the Palestinians by an invitation from Secretary Kerry. She stated, I truly hope that our dream and aspiration to negotiate in order to end the conflict can be translated into meetings, little dialogue, and hopefully in the end, ending the conflict. Negotiator Livni explained that there are many different opinions in Israel, even within the cabinet. She said, within the government, we have parties that are more problematic for them to support the process. But yet, I hope and I do believe, she said, we can have the majority of the Israeli government to support this. I believe that this is in the interest of Israel, she said. But of course, we have different opinions in the Israeli cabinet. Right. When Livni was asked, why do you think the time is right to come to the table now? She responded, I believe that the time was right also years ago. I support deeply not only the idea of negotiations, but the idea of the need to end the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. This is in the interest of Israel. It's not a favor to the Palestinians, nor to the UN, not even to the President of the United States. It is our own interest. This is the reason for the idea of relaunching the negotiations, and it is not because of a pressure or a favor to do something for the sake of others. It is in the interest of Israel. Some speculate the reason for these talks is because Prime Minister Netanyahu wants a better relationship with the United States on other issues, such as Iran. To this, Livni answered, it's not only the interest of Israel and the relations with the United States, which are very important to us in Israel from a strategic point of view. It's not just a matter of same values and interests, but it's really a very important relationship for us to keep. She continued, you could see minutes after Secretary Kerry announced about the invitation and both sides agreed to come to negotiate. Those that opposed this declaration, uh, it was Hamas and the Palestinian Authority, and those that are not fighting for the creation of a new state, but they're actually fighting against the existence of the state of Israel. Now, by relaunching the negotiations, we can reform different groups in this region. Livni explained, on one hand, we have the extremists. We have Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, and on the other, we have group of pragmatics that now by relaunching negotiations with the support of the Arab League, we can have the same camp of moderate acting against those that are using terror and are not accepting not only the right of Israel to exist, but they are fighting the values and interests that the United States represent in the region. A negotiator, excuse me, negotiator Livni was also asked about the peace treaty Israel has with its neighbor Egypt and if the recent toppling of President Morsi has affected their relationship. Her response, the good news is that having peace between Israel and Egypt is something that since we have had this for so many years, any changes until now in the Egyptian presidency and government doesn't affect the peace treaty because they understand as well that is in their own interests. Livni once again explained, once again explained, the last thing that I want as an Israeli is I truly don't want to relate to the in internal situation in Egypt or Syria or any other of our neighbors that internally are in terms of changes and troubles and all this stuff because I don't want the extremists there or elsewhere, she said, using any statement coming from Israel in order to say, you see, Israel is involved in the internal situations in Egypt. So Livni concluded, the wise thing to do is to be silent now. Mm. And that's exactly what Justice Minister Zippy Livni did on some of the questions she was asked. When she was asked about what Israel's reaction was to some on the Palestinian side who say there must be an agreement on the 67 borders as a basis of negotiation before this process starts, she replied, that's the last thing I want to do now, is to do something that both sides agreed with Secretary Kerry. She continued, 
I'm not going to relate publicly the terms of understanding that we reach with the United States and the United States with the Palestinians or vice versa. The whole idea is to build trust and confidence, she said, and not to enter into this blame game that we used to have in the last years. Hmm, interesting. Now, in a recent news briefing in Jordan, Secretary of State John Kerry announced an agreement uh, reached to resume final status negotiations between the Palestinians and Israelis. If everything goes as expected, Saeed Arakak, Minister Zippy Livni, which you spoke about, and Itzhak Molko will be joining Secretary Kerry in Washington, D.C. to begin initial talks. A further announcement will be made by all of them at that time. Kerry stated his hopefulness because of the courage in leadership shown by President Mahmoud Abbas and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, stating that both of them were instrumental in pushing this process in this direction and they wouldn't be making this briefing if they hadn't made the choice to initiate these talks. It should be interesting to see how this progresses. Mm -hmm. In a recent interview with, with The Telegraph News, uh, Yuval Steinitz was asked in his belief of the two-state solution. His response, I think this is the only possible solution to the Israeli and Palestinian conflict. It'll be difficult to achieve, and there'll be many obstacles in the way, but there is no other solution. He also said that he believed that most Israelis would support the two-state solution even if they had to make some considerable concessions. If they were to move forward, this would be the end of the conflict, he continued, explaining himself by saying there would be no more demands, for one thing, as well as a recognition of Israel as a Jewish state the way it was established once and for all. He restated the fact that both sides would have to make difficult and considerable concessions. Robert Dannon, a senior fellow for Middle East and African or Africa Studies with the Council on Foreign Relations, explained three things regarding the upcoming peace talks between the Israelis and Palestinians. The three challenges are bringing about clarity in these talks. Now, previously, vague diplomatic formulas were used to bridge seemingly irreconcilable differences. Now they will have to focus on the core issues of disagreements, such as the Israeli and Palestinian border. Another thing they'll have to discuss is both the Israeli and Palestinians will face domestic challenges, nego negotiating with each other across the same table, as well as their counterparts back home. Resuming talks with Israel is very unpopular amongst the Palestinians and amongst Fatah and the PLO, which of course have Abbas heads. Palestinians think Israel wants open-ended negotiations and that the Palestinian political standing will fall without rapid and tangible results from the talks. Because of the, some of these difficulties, some suggest Netanyahu might have to leave his party as three others have done in the past, which were Ariel Sharon, Ehud Olmert, and Zippy Livni, because of his party's opposition to these negotiations. Uh, the third challenge is with the U.S., mostly because this conflict has taken up a great majority of Secretary Kerry's time. Soon President Obama and Secretary of State Kerry will have to decide how much energy they want to spend on the Israeli and Palestinian conflict versus destabilizing the situation in Syria, managing the road ahead with Egypt, and also trying to prevent Iran from developing nuclear weapons. Either way, they're going to have a lot on their plate. Interesting. And to close us out today, on the website Celebrity Bella, several comments were made in response to the recent case of Trayvon Martin. Apparently, someone's been reading up on the peaceful solution. They wrote, in response to the Trayvon Martin tragedy, the peaceful solution, only when we teach our children better ways to respond to conflicts will we see the kind of changes we so desperately want in our urban and rural areas. Hmm, interesting. And another quote on the same site stated, it might sound a simple thing, but actually teaching about ownership and the rights of ownership, as well as the basic concepts of asking, is fundamental to instilling empathy and consideration for others and their property into our society. Interesting. That's right. Interestingly enough, too, Jeff, that the peaceful solution is uh, making its case to global leaders regarding their solution to stop all wars. I truly believe that if the peaceful solution was implemented, we would see a stop to wars, both local levels 
between individuals as well as between nations. And also interesting are all these developments that we're seeing once again with the peace talks. So mm -hmm. we're definitely going to have to keep up with that. That's right. Now you can request your newsletter and prophetic word if you have not already done so. You can write the House of Yahweh by, uh, get your pencil and paper, take this address down, P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas 79604. You can also call them at 1-800-613-9494 or visit them on the web at www.yahweh.com or www.yisrohawkins.com. You can also email them at info at yahweh.com. And of course, all calls outside the United States, please dial the number on your screen. Well, don't go anywhere. Up next is Yisrael Hawkins. From all of us here at YPN News, I'm Jeffrey Heimerman. And I'm Katana Alexander. Thanks for watching.